Hey guys, Tyrop here, and today we're taking a look at the patch notes for Warcraft 3 1.31. This just came out a couple of days ago, and my next cast is going to be on this, so I thought I might as well do this, keep you guys up to speed, because it's probably a little bit too much for me to cover during uh, the start of a cast. We're getting started here, Orc Blademaster. Cooldown now occurs when Windwalk breaks, and reduced cooldown of Windwalk from five seconds to two seconds across all levels. So you're not gonna be able to go like wind walk, wait for five seconds, hit them and then wind walk straight away. That's kind of getting removed as an option. So once you come out of wind walk, you'll have to wait two seconds until you can go back into camouflage. So you might be able to stop a little bit of burst damage, a little bit of cheese, but overall it should be fine. And then critical strike, now benefits from all damage once again, not just base damage. So I think in 1.30 or something, uh, yeah, they nerfed it. So stuff like claws, you know, actual damage damage items didn't go onto critical strike, but that's being reverted. I think, you know, the common sentiment was that Blade Master was a little bit underpowered, especially after it received some like agility nerfs to its base stats. So now it's getting a slight buff back onto the critical strike. Kodo Beast. Devour can target mountain giants without resistance skin. That's pretty cool. Don't know if you'll go mass Kodos to beat mountain giants because you will be living in fear for when that resistance skin upgrade pops, but still a nice touch. Torrent Pulverize. Torrent now start with a reduced pulverize that deals 20 damage. So that's the uh, like splash attack they do. The pulverize upgrade has been changed to upgrade pulverize, which increases damage of pulverize to 60. And pulverize lumber costs reduced from 250 to 225. So yeah, they're talking about even though they made Torn Totems easier to access, you know, you can access them at tier two, or you can build them at tier two and then get Torn at tier three. People still weren't really using them, so they're just trying to buff them up a little bit more now. So that's nice. Spiked Barricades. Reduce the number of upgrade levels from 3 to 2. Tier 1 is 5 base damage plus 20% of the attacker's damage. And Tier 2 is 5 base damage plus 50% of the attacker's damage. So attacking Tier 2 Spiked Barricades is going to be... Super painful, man. I feel like this, between this and the Burrows getting fortified armor earlier on as well, it's going to be very hard to <laughs> destroy an orc base. It's, it's interesting. But yeah, just about nobody gets spiked barricades unless it's in like 4v4 and stuff like that. So it's an uh, interesting change. Spike barricades. Human Knight. New upgrade, Sundering Blades. Research at the barracks. Requires castle, lumber mill, and blacksmith. So that is a lot of tech to get this right at the end of the game. 100 gold, 100 lumber, 40 second research time. Increases knight da damage against medium armor by 15%. So they've already got normal attack. So they've already got a 150% bonus. Or damage bonus of 50%, but you know. 150% against medium armor. So now they're just going to do even more. So like fiends are just going to get chopped to pieces by knights now. It's going to be crazy. But it should also help them against mountain giants they mention here. So yeah, man, that's it's going to be strong, man. I'm scared, you know. It's a strong upgrade. Paladin. Equipping orbs no longer slows attack speed when attacking E units. Well, that's Weird, why would it do that in the first place? Animal War Training. Knight base hit points increased by 50. Griffin Rider also increased by 50. Dragonhawk Riders also increased by 50. But then Animal War Training goes down from 150 to 100 as a bonus. And Animal War Training Lumber Cost actually also getting reduced. So all these you know, late game units getting their base stats improved pre-upgrade, upgrade being less impactful and going down a cost. So now that, you know, human are unable, well, 
it's not as common to see humans go for fast expansions. You know, there's a lot more like tier three single base action going on. They're just making their tier three units a bit more viable pre like all of these upgrades because the economy is not going to be as strong without multiple bases. That's interesting. Interesting change. But as I said, I feel like men. Knights are going to just slam dark fiends. Control magic. Additional mana cost up from 35% to 45%. And uh, they say that they you know, initially changed this to make it a little bit more viable, but now it's they're <laughs> reverting that change. Didn't really like it. Fair enough. Orb of fire. Bonus damage reduced from... 10 to 7 no longer gives an area of effect damage so you know it used to give like splash damage to melee attacks so it's you know pretty strong on the mountain king maybe but new effect now decreases the effectiveness of healing abilities and hit point regeneration by 35 percent for three seconds like this is a crazy change right it's a like completely different effect so it means like you know, if you're fighting undead once again, and you're hitting a unit and it gets hit with a death coil or something, that unit's going to get reduced healing. So once again, man, I'm, you know, I do play undead, so I'm worried about worried about uh, the human matchup now. Seems like it's going to be quite strong against undead specifically, and I already felt human try hero was quite strong against undead. But yeah, it's interesting, uh, interesting change to the all fire, which. To be fair, it didn't really get much use, so maybe we'll see it a bit more prevalently uh, going forwards. Nice change to the Orb of Fire. Night Elf. Ultravision is now applied to Mountain Giants, Spirits of Vengeance, and Avatars of Vengeance. Okay, small we'll change there. Dark Ranger. I thought this was a uh, neutral hero, but that's all right. Life Drain. Life Drain now applies the Dark Minion effect of the current rank of Black, Black Arrow. Requires at least one point of Black Arrow. So yeah, I mean, if you Life Drain a unit and kill it whilst it's being Life Drained, you'll get a Skeleton back. That's a cool change to Life Drain. Nice, uh, nice change. Which, uh, yeah, it doesn't really see too much use, honestly, Life Drain. Demon Hunter, Mana Burn. Mana cost reduced from 60 to 50 across all levels. This is another change that they made in 1.30 or something, I believe. Used to be 50 up to 60, now back to 50. They say that because Keep is so strong, obviously it's crowding out Demon Hunter, but also maybe that this was one step too far on the Mana Burn and reverting that change. Druid of the Claw base stats, minimum damage in bear form from 22 to 23. So very, very minor minimum damage buff there. Pretty small change to bears who also got uh, some small nerfs. So now they're buffing them back up a little bit. Because yeah, as we saw, like mountain giant archer strategies have kind of been quite popular with Night Elf. Haven't seen too many bears for quite some time now. Glaive Thrower, Vorpal Glaives Upgrade, now increases projectile speed, like greatly, from 1400 to 2000, no longer guaranteed to hit its primary target, no longer changes to do damage in a line, instead Glaive Throwers keep their pre-upgrade circular area effect damage, yeah, this was another 1.30 or thereabouts change, they changed Vorpal Glaives, but now they're just going to act more like regular siege units except obviously the speed of the projectile is going to be super fast so you know you still will have a chance to miss but because of the high speed you can just leave it on auto attack you don't have to worry about predictive attack rounds quite so much as you do with other pieces of siege weaponry it's an interesting change back to kind of the old ways with glaive thrower hippogriff rider Base stats, base hit points increased from 780 to 785, very small change there, which is the combined health of a Hippogriff and a Archer alone, a very minor change there. 
Keeper of the Grove. Night vision radius reduced from 900 to 800, so not going to see quite so well at night. And then base intelligence from 19 to 18, so that all reduces mana pool a little bit, reduces ability to regenerate mana as well, so small nerf to the keeper there. But tranquility, vulnerability duration reduced from 3 seconds to 1, so a nerf to tranquility. Kind of interesting. Tranquility, I felt like the cooldown on it was like really fast, but maybe they want to keep that. I didn't really feel like the invulnerability was that big of an issue, but I did feel like the uh, cooldown on it was super quick. Often see it in like back to back fights. You know, like sh with short intervals was interesting. And then uh, Force of Nature, here's a big one. Tree and base damage reduced from 15 to 14, so. Nerf to treat damage. Dev say how Keeper is just going like crazy at the moment. Even with you know my one cast a week, I'm sure you guys got a feel for how strong and how prevalent the Keeper has been. Okay, Undead, Gargoyle. Base stats increase movement speed very slightly from 350 to 375. Gold cost reduced from... 185 to 175 so yeah nobody's really been going for gargoyles for a very long time so i think the gold buff is uh, certainly nice movement speed also gonna improve their mobility but they mention here how they're still slower than the anti-air units designed to counter them so they're not going to be outrunning other pieces of anti-air that are designed to counter them but you know just improving their mobility a little bit helping them out a little bit since you very rarely see gargoyles these days. Necromancer, new spell order, huge change to Necromancer. Cripple, starting out with Cripple instead of Raised Dead. Raised Dead going to the first level, the Adept level. And then Unholy Frenzy still at Mastery. But Unholy Frenzy has been changed, we'll get to that in a second. Cripple, now 85 mana, reduces movement speed by 75%. Reduces attack speed by 10%, reduces attack damage by 35%. So, you know, cripple right out of the gate. Might be quite useful if you're trying to, like, chase down and get kills and stuff. Similar to Purge, how Purge is being used currently. Maybe this is a chase down tool for undead outside of, like, Unholy Aura. Unholy Frenzy. Renamed to Insight Unholy Friendly, sacrifices a target friendly undead unit. So it's a pretty high cost unless you've got a skeleton rolling around, which you probably will because you know, you've got raised dead, but maybe you don't. But anyway, all nearby non-mechanical units gain Unholy Frenzy, including neutral enemy units. Hold on. Including neutral and enemy units. That's crazy, man. So you're going to have to do this at like a start of a fight. During doing this mid-fight, you could end up just buffing your opponents. Man, I didn't, I didn't notice that change when I read through this initially. Raised to 175 mana. So that's a huge amount of mana now. Added a 5 second cooldown. Ability area of effect is 250. So, okay. And then attack speed bonus reduced from 75% to 50%. So yeah, some huge changes to Unholy Frenzy. You see it sometimes, you know, dropped on like Fiends and Frostworms during big late game fights, but didn't see it too much otherwise. Interesting how, you know, you have to sacrifice a unit now, so it feels like they're making you lean on that kind of mechanism as Undead a little bit more, as we'll, we'll soon see. It's a new item which I'll cover very shortly, but Skeletal Mastery now requires Necromancer Adept training to unlock, so you know, since you can't pull Skeletons before that, of course you should uh, do things that way. So yeah, that's an interesting change to Necromancers, big changes, I'm very interested to see how the uh, Unholy Frenzy goes. Uh, Ghoul Frenzy. Increase attack speed bonus from 25% to 
So that's a big attack speed bonus. You know, Ghoul Frenzy, sometimes you see it, but yeah, ghouls tend to drop off hugely in the late game. Even with the Ghoul Frenzy upgrade, you really see people rebuilding ghouls. Just about never happens. So increasing Ghoul Frenzy, maybe you'll see people rebuilding ghouls in the late game. Because, yeah, they're very hard to keep alive. You often just end up losing them unless you've got the micro of a god. And just, yeah, overall, a small buff to ghouls there. Should be uh, nice. Maybe we'll see some more ghoul starts because I feel like fiends have kind of been dominating the undead meta recently. New item, Ritual Dagger. Bought at the Tomb of Relics. It's the undead shop. Available at tier 1. 125 gold, 2 charges. Stock 1. 90 second restock time. Item detail. Sacrifices a friendly undead unit to heal 100 hit points to all friendly non-mechanical units. Damage interrupts regeneration. So similar to maybe the heal scroll that humans get. But I believe that doesn't that heal 125 or maybe a few more hit points. So this is, you know, 100 health isn't a huge amount. 5 second cooldown between charges. 400 cast range, 300 effect radius. So yeah, a new way for Undead to heal between combat, which is kind of crazy. And they mention how Undead healing is very limited, which is why you see like Death Knight basically every game. So trying to open up some options for Undead to maybe go for some other heroes using conjunction with Rod Necromancy. Obviously that's a very obvious com combination as well as maybe skeletons as we saw earlier from necromancers or crypt lord beetles another nice idea uh, so yeah that's that's an interesting new item for undead brand new item ritual dagger giving our undead some more opportunities to heal very cool but obviously you know at this cost it's nothing special and you know you have to sacrifice a skeleton maybe to do it so that kind of inflates its cost a little bit makes it a little bit more favorable maybe comparable once again to the scroll of healing that human get that's not all neutral units alchemist healing spray cooldown increased from zero to six seconds so spray getting nerfed acid bomb Level 1, primary damage reduced from 6 to 5 and secondary damage reduced from 4 to 3. Then level 2, primary damage also going down by 1, secondary damage also going down by 1. So nerf to healing spray, acid bomb and also transmute. It's the uh, level 6 ability. Bonus gold re granted reduced from 125% to 100%. Few changes to Alchemist, as we saw, this is very popular with just about every race, making a pretty heavy use of Alchemist. A few nurse to his abilities here. Fire Lord, Soul Burn. Mana cost reduced from 85 to 65, damage reduced from 125 to 80, and then once again reduced from 270 to 200 and then once again reduced from 450 to 340. So yeah, they're reducing the cost and reducing its damage. They, they say how uh, Final has a lot of very mana intensive abilities, so they're trying to re reduce the mana cost of this, maybe open up some more opportunities for Fire Lord in terms of builds. That's a nice change, M making it more viable as like a single target silence. It's kind of uh, cool. So you didn't see too much of Soul Burn, honestly. If I load it basically only for those lava spawns. Pandaren Brewmaster. So this, you know, it used to be very heavily used, but did get a lot of nerfs. And so uh, they're averting some of those nerfs, basically. Increased damage from 5 to 7. I th maybe this is from like 50 to 70. Maybe we're missing some zeros on this. I'm not sure exactly how the Breath of Fire... If this like multiplies by 10 or something, some kind of unknown mechanism for the Breath of Fire, but I believe this is, should be like a 10 on 
an extra zero on each one of these. So yeah, they are basically reverting, I believe, these changes to Breath of Fire. And we didn't really see too much of Panda and Brewmaster, where he used to be super popular in the past, especially against like mechanical units like flying machines and tanks. It used to be very common, but also just in general against mass units like archers or footmen or just you know any kind of unit spam of uh, the low health low cost units and here we go more ones general items boots of speed so they can no longer be dropped by creeps but the merchants start with two stock as soon as uh cooldown is removed so this should stop those kind of races for boots at a shop which you know i thought was kind of fun having those kind of you know maybe blade master standing there the wind walk on maybe going to try steal boots away from a merchant i thought that was kind of a fun mechanism but there you go it's getting uh removed and not going to be able to get them from creeps anymore cloak of shadows Heroes carrying this item can now shadow mail during the day as well as night. So this is like a huge buff to Cloak of Shadows being able to go invis during the day. And then it says using this hide ability also works with units that have shadow mount. So surely they're not allowing night off units to shadow mail during the day. That seems reckless. Hopefully that's not the case. But yeah, this was like the worst item, you know, compared to all of those other items, those cheap items from the easy camps. So nice, interesting change to Cloak of Shadows certainly makes it a lot better. Crystal Ball, item level decreased from 5 to 3. So, you know, you get it from easier camps now. And gold price reduced from 500 to 300. So it'll give you less, when you, less money back when you sell it. Yeah, Crystal Ball was always a meme, basically always got sold. So now you'll get it from uh, easier camps and you might be tempted to keep it because you won't be able to sell it for as much. It's kind of a nice change to the Crystal Ball, which was always a <laughs> bit of a terrible unit or item. Lionhorn of Stormwind, Devotion Aura increased from 1 to 2 so this is mirroring the change that happened to the paladin's aura going up so it should make the line horn of storm quite a lot better it still comes from like quite a low level camp so it's interesting change to line horn of stormwind period of vitality gold price reduced from 350 to 325 so that's pretty minor change ring of protection this is a big change all levels gold price adjusted to be the same as other permanent items of the same level and the first ring is going from plus two to plus three and that's the same the next level rings going from plus three to plus four and the next level ring is going from plus four to plus five and then uh, essentially they're essentially they're eliminating the first level of ring and then moving all the other rings into the previous to the gaps basically so yeah, rings of protection was always like, oh man, I got ring of protection, man, that sucks. But now it should actually be quite decent for its uh, the level of camps that they come out of. And also you won't get them from those high level camps. So it's a nice change to the ring of protection. Scourge bone chimes, vampiric aura effect increased from 15 to 20%. So that's the same as, you know, the aura that the Crypt Lord gets. Crypt Lord? Or whatever. Um, yeah, the aura that the vampire aura on him went from fifteen percent to twenty percent, and so now the aura items getting the same change, same as the devotion aura. Century wards duration decreased from five minutes to three minutes. So yeah, century wards were really OP in high level games. You know, the amount of scouting information they gave for so long was uh, a little bit OP. This is just for the ones from uh, as the item, not from the Witch Doctor wards. So let's see, uh, just for the items. So that should reduce the impact. Which, you know, it was very big. If 
you got a sentry ward down and your opponent didn't know about it, didn't reveal it. The amount of scouting information you gave was crazy strong in those high level games. Tome of Experience, no longer a random drop from Creep Camp, so no more Tomes of Experience. And they basically say how gave like a very unfair advantage in the early game and then late game uh, often didn't matter too much. So they didn't want to reduce the experience it gave and then just make it like complete trash in the late game. So they're just outright removing it. Kind of similar to <laughs> maybe some changes we see in Company of Heroes, honestly. Uh, maybe removing some of those no tech call and see. <laughs> And then Warsong Battle Drums now provides the same aura as the Coda Beast aura. So, you know, with all other aura items, they weren't they were unable to stack with the auras or the uh, like hero auras, the Django of Endurance, Unholy Aura, or Endurance Aura, you know, all those auras couldn't stack with the items, but the Warsong Battle Drums could stack with the Kodo Beast. Aura, but that is no longer the case. And yeah, there's a few map changes and whatnot, but yeah, that's the all the changes, a lot of changes. I really wanted to cover them because I felt like otherwise you guys might be a bit lost as to what's happening in my cast, even though I only do them once a week. But yeah, a lot of changes to 1.31, and I think it's looking really promising. Maybe you're gonna shake up the meta a little bit. And yeah, I'm excited to give these a try. As an undead player, try out that new healing item. But uh, thanks for tuning in, guys, and until next time, goodbye and good luck.